Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I am so excited to show you this epic, epic game. This probably is my most epic game, even more epic than the other one that I made a video about. So I hope you'll enjoy it. It's from the last game from the 2022 World Tournament against Strider656, who has been a longtime supporter of this channel. And I'm really excited to share this video with you. Before I jump in, I want to uh, let everybody know that I've been working on a solo variant for War of the Ring, and if you are interested in playtesting it and have the Java client and are on Discord, please feel free to reach out to me on Discord if you're interested in checking that out. So without further ado, let's jump in. This is the last game of the tournament. We played our my first game against Strider656 with one action token. And so in this game, I also get, I'm free people and I get one action token. I chose the muster action token and my opponent allocated zero eyes and uh, I only rolled one character die. And obviously when your opponent rolls no eyes on turn one, it's always exciting if you can get a bunch of characters. Think if you would play if you would use a ring to get an extra movement. So I have two playable cards. I'm happy I'm, I'm happy to see them given that I rolled two Palantirs. Would you plan on using a ring to get a second movement or not? Would you see what you draw into? So think about that. Let's jump in. This is, as I mentioned, an epic game. So I'll try and go relatively quickly. All right, my opponent... Uh, I start by moving, I guess, because I know that I want to. I was afraid of Lidless Eye. I don't know. I'm not sure that that's correct to move there, but it does. It turns on like Nazgul Strike or Nazgul Search, but they're they're not doing that. So, yeah, I, I think it probably doesn't hurt. And I guess if they play Lidless Eye, it would be a shame to not get your free movement. So, okay, my opponent starts by playing Give It to Us. That's an interesting choice. I might. I might draw cards because you know that you're going to end up drawing some cards with these Palantirs. I might draw them first and see if there's something maybe higher priority. So it's not bad. I mean, obviously it's good to get a red tile in the pool, but um, if you know you're going to end up drawing cards later in the turn and you have room in your hand, I think it's nicer to draw first. Okay, my opponent now draws. All right, they get Willig High and they muster Isengard. That makes sense. And then they get Saruman, which also makes sense because... You know, I don't, I, there's no chance of me getting Gandalf turn one, so that makes total sense. And now I go ahead and start playing my cards. I start with the strategy card because I have this muster here, and maybe I'll draw into a card that I need to use the muster for. And, um, you know, it's kind of nice to save Power Too Great as a surprise, but I want to cycle my strategy cards to get to scouts, at least one scouts early in the game. That's useful. If, if there's an early attack on Rohan, I can use Fords of Aizen. If there's an attack up in Dew, I can use Old Forest Road. So, all right, happy to generally cycle any strategy card early in the game. I get Immerhill of Dulhamroth. Love to see this card. This is great. It makes me feel much more secure about Gondor. Happy to see that. Yet another playable strategy card. Okay, now, which would you play here? Would you play another strategy? Would you play a character? I think I opted for the character here because I um, wanted to keep Immerhill of Dol Amroth a little secret in case they were going to try and push for that. I, I don't know. It's a little bit of a... Like, I'm not staying focused on my strategy, but the negative one is a great tile, so I'm very happy to get that into the pool. All right, Axe and Bow, fine. Perfectly fine. And um, my opponent gets New Powers Rising. Now, this is really interesting because if they had drawn two cards before playing their character card, they would have now, I mean, who knows, chances are different things uh, as an alternate reality. But if they had drawn New Powers Rising, they could then use their third Palantir on round one instead of playing the red tile, playing New Powers Rising. And now they have a really powerful early Rohan attack. I'm not going to be able to defend Helm's Deep. It could be a great way of getting an early Witch King by taking over Rohan. They may end up doing that anyway, so it's not, you know, it's not a big deal. But okay, would you use a ring or not? I decided not to. The elves were one away from war. 
uh, or I can get the elves one away from war. It's elves are almost certainly going to be attacked at some point in the battle in the game. It seemed, it seemed useful to me and I hate giving up early rings. Yes. A, a guaranteed free movement is really nice, but I just, I just like hanging on to my rings. I, I don't know. Okay. So my opponent gets armies moving. Don't really know exactly where they're going to attack yet. All right. So I get I will go alone, and I'm happy to see this because maybe there's going to be a way to get an early Aragorn. I'm, I'm always looking for an early Aragorn if I can. So opponent has to allocate one eye, they roll one more, and I get no movement. So, ah, uh, you know, what, what can I do with this? I have no chance of getting an early Aragorn. I don't, um, it's just, it's just a kind of a bad roll, um. Maybe I end up getting the elves to war really fast, and then I facilitate the Witch King. Like, I don't really want to give my opponent the Witch King either. So we'll see what they do. Um, I at least have Swords in Ariador, which is going to let me draw two char or two strategy cards, and then potentially I can play them with my musters. So I think I think I pass. My opponent plays New Powers Rising now, so it didn't really matter. right? They got the Palantirs now anyway, so that's great. I play Swords in Ariador now in case I draw into um, something like Scouts could be really useful for Fords of Eisen. And maybe I should have done that first because now, given the new powers rising, I'm not going to be able to... It, it might be tricky for me to get these units from Edoras into Helm's Deep. I guess my feeling is if my opponent crashes into Helm's Deep this early in the game, I have a bunch of musters. I can muster up Rohan, and this could certainly cause problems for them. So yes, I don't want them to get Witch King so early, but having an early active Rohan with a bunch of musters showing is also kind of okay with me. All right, I end up drawing into Scouts, which I'm very happy to see, and a second Scouts. So this gives me plenty of flexibility. I can defend Do with this uh, Northern unit in Old Forest Road. I can keep these units in Fords of Eisen, get them into Helm's Deep safely. So that's all good. And maybe, you know, um, who knows? Maybe these units can do something someday. Okay. Um, it's pretty rare that these units would ever do anything, but okay. So uh, my opponent musters up in Orthanc more, and now I take this opportunity to get these units from Westamnet ready to go into Helm's Deep if needed. And um, and then again, this unit Old Forest Road, which is great. My opponent plays, plays Worm Tongue, so, um, you know, I, I guess I should have acknowledged this. When they mustered in Orthanc, they sort of acknowledged they weren't getting the Witch King this round, but if I had done something like given them a ring, maybe they could have more easily gotten the Witch King. Um, I don't know exactly where they attack. I guess the elves, but yeah, I guess they weren't so worried about rushing the Witch King. And this Worm Tongue, you know, I think I think this is a good, this is a pretty good play. It's definitely going to slow down Rohan. I was excited to get Rohan to war early. This is going to let them, I, I am going to get my units into Helm's Deep, but they're going to be able to take over all of Rohan without me putting up a fight in Edoras or Fold. So, um, okay, so now they attack into Fords. That progresses Rohan towards war, but does not activate them. And I play scouts. They had Swarm of Bats, which is great play on their part. Um, that's exactly the right right move. Um, but they only get one six, which is, you know, you expect somewhere between one and two. So it's not particularly unlucky, but a little unlucky. Um, I get no hits. And they go ahead and press, which I think is correct. And then I use my army movement to get um, Helm's Deep as full as possible so that at least uh, Rohan can put up some fight and, I don't know, I guess get this unit ready in Erebor. Okay, then my opponent starts to take over all of Rohan. And this uh, movement into Westamnet progresses Rohan towards war again. Um, and I go ahead and muster... Gondor here. I guess my thinking is it doesn't really help to muster Rohan. My opponent would just move into Edoras. So yeah, I just I just don't know. Uh, maybe there was a better way to defend Helm's Deep here, but I didn't manage to do it. I want to at least make sure Gondor stays safe if um, Helm's Deep, if, if Rohan is going to fall. Maybe, maybe 
you know, if Edris and Fold aren't really protected, well, maybe I could come up and free it at some point. Who knows? But um, mostly I'm just like, well, if, if Rohan is falling, I might as well defend somewhere else. The elves are, you know, relatively well defended, being one away from war. Um, I do have Imrahil of Dol Amroth, so I'm feeling okay about Gondor, particularly if I can get more units into Minas Tirith before any armies come in. Okay, so we confirm that if you're using a character die just to move, you must move with a leader. So they move a leader into Edoras. And <clears throat> normally when you take over a, a settlement or something like that, you would progress towards war. But because Rohan is not active, they don't progress, they, they don't actually get to war because you can't get to war if you're not active. And that's sort of the effect of Wormtongue. And Wormtongue says it only, it only goes away or it can only be activated by an attack. Um, in Edoras or Helm's Deep, and that was a movement. That was not an attack. And so this sort of scenario, I think, is exactly the best way of playing Wormtongue. It's not, I don't normally play it, but if you are going to play it, this is exactly how to execute it. Once the once free people have already moved out of Edoras, you get to take over Edoras for free. You get to completely take over Rohan, then you get to concentrate your armies on Helm's Deep. So um, I think that was nicely played. All right, I get some more cards. Nothing I'm particularly excited about. I will go alone is still a possibility. I would love to get some movement, kill off Gandalf, maybe crown Aragorn. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Okay, so my opponent doesn't have to allocate eyes, but they still allocate one eye. And then <clears throat> they roll two more and I get only one movement and still no will of the West. So even if I manage to kill off Gandalf here, I'm still not getting uh, Gandalf the White. So I pass and my opponent gets orcs multiplying again. That's great. It's a good way of attacking up north or maybe they'll come to Lorien. I don't know, but this army is certainly now a scary one. And um, that's interesting here. I'm not exactly sure why I'm moving instead of playing this Palantir first. I guess... I guess I don't know what I'm going to play. I think my thinking here was... If I move first, take a little bit of damage, or maybe not get caught at all, then I can use this Palantir for I will go alone and send Aragorn or Strider six spaces to get to, I don't know, here, um, Druidwaith Aoyaur. I still don't know how to pronounce that. And then I'm one away from, one move away from Dol Amroth. I, I don't know. I really don't know exactly what I'm thinking there. Why not play Elf and Rope first or even Axe and Bow if I want to? Yeah, so I, I think that was probably a mistake. All right, my opponent hits me on my second move and one reveal. So, you know, that's not great. You don't really want to see that. Um, a three would have been fine. Not getting hit would be fine. But one reveal, especially with an eye on top of that, because then that's going to make their other uh, tile drawing cards more effective. It's just... Bad start. Okay, round three. All right, I go ahead and lose Gandalf because hopefully I roll Will of, the, Will of the West next round. Orthanc is a little bit vulnerable, so maybe maybe that'll help keep um, uh, Isengard under control a little bit if I manage to get Gandalf. Also, this way I can use Strider's ability to hide. So that's my thinking. And while I'm not excited to be revealed in Lorien, <clears throat> I mean in Holland, and have to go through Moria, the fellowship is going slow enough that um, I'd rather I'd rather go the most efficient route. Okay, my opponent gets armies into Orthanc, gets armies onto the fellowship. Uh, oh no, they take they take it back because they know I can't um, I can't immediately move the fellowship, so there's no rush on that. They take over fold. Um, still, Rohan is not at war. I go ahead and hide the fellowship. Um, Ring wraiths are abroad here with a character, you know. It's not bad. I always like saving ring wraiths are abroad for a palantir instead of with a character because uh, it's just it turns a non-attack die into an attack die. But I guess the reality is they don't actually they need to move Nazgul around. I guess um, I'm not sure. I mean, it feels like they could just attack into Helm's Deep at this point. Um, we'll see what they do. So they put a Nazgul on on Holland. Okay, that makes sense. And they start getting. Um, this big army from Mordor ready. And then I don't know what to do here. I guess I play, I'm, I use an elven ring. What am I doing to move? 
holy cow, I surprised myself. Um, I don't know why I'm doing that. Um, I guess I'm still thinking I will go alone. I really, really want to play I will go alone is my thinking here because then I will go alone one movement, two move. I get five movement. So I guess that's one, two, three, four, five to Westamnet. And then I can move Aragorn into Minas Tirith and crown him next turn, maybe. I don't know why I'm in such a rush to get rid of, to play I Will Go Alone. Yeah, like if I'm using a ring now, second movement with a reroll into Moria, like why didn't I use a ring before to get a movement for free when there were no eyes? I mean, yeah, the game situation is different and I guess I'm feeling rushed, but wow. And on top of that, if I knew that, why didn't I do it? Why didn't I save Gandalf for this, uh, I guess I couldn't have hid. I couldn't have hid if I didn't if I didn't lose Gandalf when I did. Okay. Anyway, who knows? This is this is this surprised myself. Um, I get hit. I take zero. Uh, I get revealed into Moria, and now a second eye comes up. So at least that's a little bit of good luck on that. Um, weird. And um, then my opponent moves um, to Daggerlad and gets Orthanc ready. You know, it's that's a little surprising to me. Like it could have, there could have been a Witch King this round, if if Westamnet attacked into Helm's Deep, Rohan goes to war, and then with that final die, you can get the Witch King. So, um, I guess my opponent is just worried about. They're worried about Gandalf showing up. So okay, not. I mean, good to be ready for Gandalf. And I drew into Dead Men of Dunharrow. So I guess I felt like, oh, I know Dead Men of Dunharrow is coming. All right, this is interesting. I have these eight cards. What would you get rid of if you had to pick two to get rid of here? I love Cairdan's ships to be able to defend Dol Amroth. I like Dol Imrahil of Dol Amroth to defend Dol Amroth. I certainly like having scouts. Deadman of Dunharrow is good. I think I would discard. I don't know. It's a tough choice. Um, think about what, what you would do. I discard Kindred of Glorfindel and... Elven Rope. Obviously, Elven Rope is quite good, especially if the hunt pool is small, but it's not as good as the other blue tiles, and Axe and Bow definitely saves me one um, one corruption, possibly more with Foul Thing out. So I value, I value Axe and Bow a little higher at the moment because there are four ones in the pool. So I think that's why. Okay, my opponent allocates one eye, rolls two more, only gets one attack. So that's good at least. And now I get my Will of the West. So I'm very happy to see that. And that is the first Will of the West of the game for me. Uh, Gandalf is a little late, but not egregiously late. So that's okay. And I start off by moving right away in case my opponent has a tile drawing card that could reveal me while I'm in Moria. I would much rather get out of Moria now. And my opponent gets two hits, gets an eye, and um, the hunt has not been particularly kind to the fellowship, and three eyes have been drawn. So I get revealed. I think I just take the two corruption because I don't want to risk losing Strider here. Yep, I take the two corruption, and, and then the extra is another two, so I just take another two because now I'm, I'm at least out of Morgul wound range, and... Um, I have I Will Go Alone, so that's going to heal me a bit. I have Dead Men of Dunharrow, so that can be useful. But I'm actually, I Will Go Alone, I can go straight from Dimrald Dale into Minas Tirith. So, so that's at least an efficient use of, of getting Aragorn. Okay, so I hide with the Palantir using Strider's ability. My opponent gets the Southrons and Easterlings to war, and now because there's the threat of Day Without Dawn, I get Gandalf and Fangorn, and my opponent besieges Helm's Deep, and Wormtongue goes away, but it did its job. Look at this. Rohan is completely contained. You have a giant army on Helm's Deep. Really nice. This, this is well played. And, um, 
And then my opponent plays Candles of Corpses. Seems perfectly fine. Um, yeah, why not? I guess I could see Olegai maybe, but yeah. Candles of Corpses is good. And they get one Corruption, which is slightly worse than expected, but uh, good. So I'm at five Corruption. I'm in Dimmerdale. Um you know, it, maybe it would be nice to move here and make it into Lorien next turn, but my opponent is rolling three dice on sixes. I mean, three dice on three dice on fives. So, um, and I have f six cards in my hand. I think I'm going to play I Will Go Alone. Yeah, so I, I go ahead and get Strider out. Now at least I'm safe from, I'm safe from like Foul Thing doing horrible things to me. And I have five dice. So I have, you know, a decent chance of rolling Will of the West, crowning Aragorn. By doing it now, at the end of the round, I am allowing myself to, I, I'm making myself safe from Day Without Dawn. Because if I waited until the start of next round to move out Strider, then in res on my opponent's next action, they could play Day Without Dawn and get rid of the Will of the West. So this way, at least, once I roll a Will of the West, I'm going to be able to get Aragorn. So so that's nice. I think about, should I bring anyone else? Um, yes, I bring Boromir. Gondor is not at war yet. Um, I want to make sure that um, Aragorn is well defended in Minas Tirith. And because the Fellowship is going so slowly, I at least want to give myself some opportunities to defend militarily with with good strength and therefore um i i'm like willing to maybe wait in lorien for a while heal up a little bit while i do military stuff especially if i have six dice i can threaten some some military things maybe or at least keep the shadow military going slowly so so that's my thinking with bringing boromir okay so i heal i heal one I'm still at four corruption. I mean, it's not it's not great. And a lot of tiles drawn. But okay, my opponent gets the Witch King. That makes sense. All right. I get Fear Fire Foes. Obviously it'd be nice if I had somebody over in the in the uh West to be able to get um Fear Fire Foes, especially before this army comes in. Like that would be that'd be great. But um, you know, I don't have it. Okay, so at this point. Uh, I get rid of Elven Cloaks. That's interesting. You know, again, another blue tile. Don't like to, but it is a, a zero. It's not as good as the negative one or the negative two. I, I don't like it. I don't feel great. I mean, think about what you would what you would discard instead at that point. All right, my opponent allocates one eye, rolls one more, and I get no movement again. So I've had two rounds so far this game where um, I got no movement and... You know, maybe that's like an argument for having moved, should have moved last time into Lorien. Like, now nah, I didn't roll a Will of the West, so I'm not even getting Aragorn this round. Um, this is not a pleasant roll. Um, I, do I want to use another ring to, like, get the Fellowship into Lorien this round so they can start healing up? I don't know. Um it's a tricky, it's a tricky role. I, I don't think it's, I still, like, this is an unlikely situation, right? Two, four, eight, 16, 32, one out of 32 chance of rolling no movement. Um, it's obviously a little different because if I rolled a single Will of the West, I would use that to crown Aragorn and probably, and not move the Fellowship. So it's not, it's even a little higher than, than that, but um, still that's like 3%, 5% chance. Uh, relatively unlikely. So I don't think you should plan last turn around maybe rolling zero movement. Okay. Anyway, I start by um, mustering into the Woodland Realm because clearly this army is coming up there. At least I want to be somewhat prepared up north. My opponent keeps going and I get a second elite into the Woodland, into woodland Realm. You have to be careful about over mustering Gondor because I mean over mustering the elves because the force pool just isn't that big I have six hit points total Kyrdan ships now like obviously I like defending Dol Amroth but probably it's going to be better to not play this at this point because I'd rather defend Wood Woodland Realm and one other elven stronghold and let Gondor defend itself especially because I have Boromir here so I can get them easily to war and I can start mustering into Dol Amroth if I need to all right, so my opponent uses a ring here to move armies. You know, it does add some efficiency 
And if they hadn't done that, then it would have been very tricky to um, take Carrick. And I have a bunch of mustering here. So, you know, when this happened in the game, I was like, was that really necessary? But but now seeing it on replay, I think that does make some sense. Obviously, I like hoarding my rings. So I don't, maybe was it, I don't know. It, it would have been trickier if they had had to attack into um, Old Forest Road and then uh, spend one character to get somebody into Carrick and then another character into Dale. It would have taken quite a few actions. So this does add some efficiency. And these three units can come in and help reinforce this attack if they need to. All right. I pass here. My opponent attacks into Old Forest Road. And I play the scouts here because maybe Dale will survive on its own. They might not roll a six. So I'd rather save this guy for sure and let Dale take its chances. All right. And I do manage to dodge the great host. The chances of my opponent having the second... Um, Swarm of bats this early was relatively low. Obviously, um, they've already played one, and there's only two in, in the strategy deck total. So uh, I'm happy to avoid the great host. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that. Uh, my mistake. They attacked into Dale. Um, I did not accurately see that. So they attacked into Dale. I still play the scouts, and I go into Erebor because now um, the north is at war. I can use my army movement to get that extra regular into the woodland realm. I could have just mustered, but because the elven force pool is so small, I'd rather take that half movement with um, with that regular, and then I can start doing tricky things. So I move this one regular from uh, Asgiliath to Druidan Forest, and since I have another army movement, um, even though Gondor is not at war yet, at some point I can move this one into fold. So... You know, I think this is showing you what you can do when you get, if your plan is to move the fellowship, but you get a whole bunch of musters that aren't, you know, and no fellowship movement, there are still things you can do as free people to just slow down shadow. So I'm just like causing trouble. It's not really what I wanted to be doing, but at least it's something. So um, my opponent goes ahead and attacks into Woodland Realm. I think that makes sense. And then they play Shadows on Misty Mountains. That's going to be great. They're going to be able to get units onto the Fellowship. And um, then I use Boromir's ability. So this is, I definitely foresaw this when I brought Boromir. It just gives you flexibility to get, get Gondor to war regardless of what you roll. And it lets you use your muster dice more efficiently. And if you have excess of something or another, you can just spend it on the mustering that you want to do getting getting them to war. Um. I'm noticing that maybe somehow I missed um, I missed using my action token. Um, I, I must have used that at some point, and I guess I used it on elves to get the elves to war in advance of this army marching up north because I wanted to use my muster dice, not getting them to war, but to getting units in there. So sorry for not mentioning that. Sorry if I missed that, um, or sorry that I did miss that. Um, but uh, that's what that's what I used it for. Okay, so Vormir mustering, using his ability, getting Gondor to war, and now this unit uh, in Druidan Forest is going to get into fold and be able to free fold and cause trouble in Rohan and make good use of the Rohan uh, reinforcement pool, which I have not used at all and have a bunch of good reinforcements. Okay, so my opponent just proceeds to attack in Helm's Deep. I think it makes sense to try and take care of Helm's Deep now, and then whatever you know, you can come back and, and take care of Fold or Edoras in the future if you need to. So I'm playing cards to try and defend. They're playing cards to attack, and in the end, um, they get a desperate battle, and then they manage to take out they manage to take out Helm's Deep by playing some cards, and they're left with three regulars at the end of that. So I think it makes sense to try and take it when they could. I retake fold, and then I guess I get this army into Buckland. I don't know. That's probably a mistake. I guess it should go to Evendim. Because is it really going to breed right away? Maybe dwarves are never going to war. I don't know. Maybe Evendim is better. They could threaten getting up to Angmar. 
maybe North Downs to Ettenmoors is better. I kind of want to like build an army here. Like this army can actually do something in the in the west, North Downs, Buckland, Bree, with the North at war. Like they can do something. All right. In any case, the key there was retaking fold. So I retook fold. And then my opponent starts mustering up an Orthanc again. I get um, my final scouts of the deck and Red Arrow, which can be useful mustering in case I roll a bunch of Palantirs. And I get my first end. So that's good. My opponent now gets their Swarm of Bats and Foul Thing. I wish I were already in Lorien. I start off, I'm guessing, still no Will of the West. So I just had two rounds of trying to crown Aragorn. Aragorn's like, no, I'm not taking the crown. Definitely not yet. And um, yeah, I've only rolled, I think I've only rolled a single Will of the West in the whole game uh, up through turn six. Okay. Uh, I start by moving because I want to get into Lorien and heal up and then do stuff militarily. So my opponent misses. And then they play Ulig High to reinforce Woodland Realm. That makes sense. I'd have a pretty buff army in Woodland Realm. And I start mustering in Rohan. My opponent draws a strategy card. And then I pass. They attack into Woodland Realm. They play Swarm of Bats here. Makes sense. I mean, you need to play something. And that's perfectly fine. Warren with Sorrow and Toil. I don't know. I might have been slightly slightly tempted to cycle that i don't know that i'm i don't know that i'm playing that as shadow um okay so they get uh two hits i get two hits they don't press they get one more hit and i get zero hits so you know that's not that's not great for me i had defended woodland realm pretty well and it's not it's not really holding up okay i get a leader in fold so that i can use this character die to move this army around because um i'm not moving the fellowship again i'm planting them in lorian i'm letting them heal and and then causing military shenanigans that's my current plan um they muster my opponent musters in dole golder i retake uh Edoras, so that's pleasant and then my opponent uses shadows gather to teleport reinforcements into um Woodland Realm. That's interesting. I might have considered attacking a little more, pressing a little more first. Um, I guess they see that I'm building a military, so they don't want to empty Dol Golder. They want to leave that as a as a pretty well defended location. If the Fellowship's going slow, then um, Shadow Military can take its time and be and be more cautious. So, okay. Um, I muster. What what's happening here? Oh, this is mustering okay so i just i mustered a regular in edoras and a um regular in brie i guess just to start building up an army who knows who knows what this northern army can do okay my opponent attacks into woodland realm and um they press a bit and we had some mistakes with casualties they play desperate battle and then they take it out. So they took out Woodland Realm. They did play a reinforcement card, a couple reinforcement cards, but um, this is still a really powerful army in Woodland Realm, and I had mustered quite a lot into there. So I am not feeling great. They're at four victory points. Fellowship is, or five, sorry, five victory points. I'm at four corruption. Fellowship is going slowly, and I still only have five dice. Aragorn is waiting to get crowned. All right. Um, I kill Gwahir. Um, I discard it because I'm happy to keep these other cards. Um, it can be useful, but all right. I declare into Lorien. I start to heal and, um, it is nice to have power to great. So it definitely makes it a little harder for shadow to, to come mess with the fellowship. My opponent allocates one. eye, rolls one more and still no, still no will of the West. So that's four, five rounds, sorry, three rounds, uh, 15 dice, no will of the West. Um, Strider is just like, no, not King. It's not me. I'm not going to do it. I refuse. So I have a bunch of Palantirs here. I don't know what's great, what's good here, but um, you'll notice that I do have, like, this is a good example of why saving cards to be able to be useful is... Um, is just helpful here. 
I'm going to get to play, probably going to get to play Red Arrow, Guards of Citadel. Maybe I do like a character movement um, so that I can use my third Palantir for Dead Men of Dunharrow. Um, all right, so let's see what my opponent's going to do. They move, and they move to um, Withered Heath, um, which I think is interesting because it is not, it's going to make my retreat, if I wanted to somehow retreat with these guys, um, I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to do so profitably. I mean, maybe you just leave one regular behind. I don't know. But okay, so they attack into Erebor, and um, I play. I just start playing some cards. I play guards of the Citadel. You know, I can just muster normally in Gondor. But what else am I going to do? Um, some some movement of armies. They've now they're like very effectively taking over Dew. They have a good um, Dew is uh, Dale, Erebor, and Woodland Realm. This area up up northeast over here. And um, they are attacking the dwarves, not only because it's useful to get more victory points, but also because they're putting the dwarves to war. And if all the fellowship nations are at war, then you can get the Mouth of Sauron. So um, I draw a strategy card because I see that I'm going to have to do something with that third Palantir. So I might as well draw something sooner. Uh, it's sort of taunting me that I don't have Woodland Realm. Um and then my opponent attacks into Erebor. I go ahead and play it as a combat card because it could be useful. And my opponent gets one hit, and I get three hits. So at least the dwarves can fight a bit. Maybe I'll manage to draw into Dane Ironfoot's guard in time. That would be nice. Um, but now dwarves are at war. I, because the dwarves are at war, I muster a, a, a leader by those dwarves, um, I guess, to be able to start doing something with that army. Maybe I'm going to, like this now, these dwarven units plus uh, these northern units, like they're far away, but maybe they could do something. So I think I'm going to try and cause trouble with them. And then I muster another regular in Edoras. And then my opponent gets the Mouth of Sauron in Moria, which is obviously not great for me. And then I move these units to Evendim. This is an argument for uh, the units in Buckland to be in Evendim instead, because then I would just have a more efficient army situation instead of four separate armies. <laughs> I just only have three. Um, and we corrected the fact that the Fellowship tracker was wrong because I declared in Lorien I should have been at zero movement, which is correct. Um, and then my opponent... Uh, not only got to get the mouth, but now already is starting to use the mouth's ability quite efficiently doing some army movement. And they retreat from Carrick into Eagle's Eyrie to be able to defend Mount Gundabad in case I'm trying to do a military attack, which I certainly could with these armies up here. So I think that's wise. And then they're bringing reinforcements into um, Erebor. With I hate to play my last um, scouts, because it gives Shadow a lot of information. While that's still in the deck, then they, they there's uncertainty. But what else am I going to do with it? I'm not really planning on moving very quickly with the Fellowship. Maybe I play Axe and Bow, but I also like Mighty Attack in case I'm going for a military situation. So <clears throat> I, I'm happy to get the mustering. It's an efficient mustering in Rohan. I want to be able to muster more in Rohan. Um, if I get uh, Path of the Woes at some point, these units can come and support Minas Tirith, and then I have a giant army down here that can go rampage in Mordor, depending on what um, shadow rolls. So mustering up more in Rohan when you have the chance is often a good idea. I can potentially go retake Helm's Deep. So I have options. I have Ents. So. All right, Mithrakot and Sting, obviously very powerful defense for the Fellowship, but um, can also be... Uh, far away since I'm not really very close to Mordor. All right, Book of Mizarbul, uh could be useful to move companions, I guess. Um, not not the most useful cards. Would love to see Dane. Okay, Fellowship continues to declare. So you can declare when you're at zero movement and um, continue to heal. So I'm healing. I was at four, then three. Now I'm down to two. So if I can get, if I can stall, I mean, the military isn't going great. Um, cause it looks like dew is going to fall, but if I can stall the fellowship or the, um, shadow military long enough, I can heal and then maybe be, be okay. All right. So, um, my opponent allocates no eyes, which I think is absolutely correct. The fellowship is going slowly. I want to stay in Lorient to heal. 
Um, great choice to allocate zero eyes. I only have five dice. If I get a Will of the West, I'm not using it to move. I'm using it to crown Aragorn. So for all those reasons, zero eyes is definitely the right choice. I finally roll my second Will of the West of the game on turn eight. <laughs> so, wow. Strider, you took your time. I have to use it right away in case my opponent has Day Without Dawn. I definitely want to crown Aragorn. So finally crown Aragorn, get my sixth die. He had been waiting for a while. Okay, my opponent is taking out um, um, Erebor and now has merged a full army in Umbar. And so this is really a shame. I ended up, yeah, I, I don't. I should have called out that I used Imrahil of Dol Amroth as a combat card. The reason why is because Gondor is at war and I thought that I would have plenty of time to muster into Dol Amroth. Um, but because I rolled that Will of the West and wanted to use it right away, I don't have time to um, I don't have time to fully muster up Dol Amroth, which is really a shame. So, like one of the main benefits of bringing Boromir down, mustering Gondor, getting Gondor to war, not only is to reclaim Rohan, but to be able to defend Dol Amroth. So, uh, this is almost certainly a mistake. I should have. I've had plenty of musters that I could have done. There could be leaders here. There could be regulars here. There, there are just a lot of reasons why I should have that better defended. I muster an elite in now, maybe better than nothing, and then my opponent plays Corsairs. Now, of course, and technically you're supposed to declare how many are you're sending on the attack, and then free people decides who if they're going into siege or not, but they always go into siege. So uh, basically always. So it doesn't really matter. Okay, my opponent leaves one, and you know, that makes sense. There it it's possible that if there's some crazy shadow roll that I could go for a military victory. I am gonna have six dice next round. If they roll horribly, you know, who knows what? Gondor is at war, everybody's at war. So like in a, in case of a bad roll, I could go for Mount Gundabad. I could go for, it looks like Moria or Mordor is a little weak. Umbar is a little weak. So Corsairs of Umbar, while I am sad to lose Dol Amroth too quickly, if some battles go my way and I'm able to somehow hold Dol Amroth or hold Minas Tirith, I mean, hold Erebor. I mean, I'm probably not going to hold Erebor, but um, like if I can hold something, and things go my way, maybe I can go for a military victory. So, but it's not great. It's definitely not not a great situation here for, for free people. Okay, Grand. Yeah, Grand. So we get Grand, and then um, uh, we get some, some uh, cards, uh, some people die, and uh, in the end, my opponent ends up with... Uh, My opponent ends up with uh, five regulars and one elite in Erebor, and um, and Erebor falls. So Grand is very powerful. Like my opponent had a giant army there, full leadership. I didn't have Dane. Um, yeah, that's how it goes. So, and I think we saw them play um, Pits of Mordor. So one of the things, if you're thinking about a military victory as free people, one of the things you want to pay attention to is does Shadow play their reinforcement cards? And Pits of Mordor is a very effective reinforcement card. So on a turn that like uh, Shadow doesn't roll a lot of musters, if they still have Palantirs and Pits of Mordor is available, then... Um, then they can still sort of defend their strongholds. So that's something to think about. They played Pits of Mordor. They've played Ulug High. Um, they've played Half Orcs and Goblin Men. So they are. They played Orcs Multiplying again, which is relevant for Dol Guldur and Mount Gundabad. Um, they've played New Powers Rising. So they are playing their their mustering cards now. I'm not actually very in any way at all close to a military victory, and um, they're at seven victory points. So like it's definitely uh not not good for me right here. Um they could potentially win this round with taking out um Dol Amroth and then coming off coming over and finishing off Pelargir. So um I'm in a lot of trouble, but you, you still have hope, so it's it's good to at least pay attention when those cards go by. Okay, my opponent um brings armies or uh, leadership to Dol Amroth, I have to do something. And um, 
I'm not I'm not exactly sure why I'm thinking about what I'm thinking about doing right here. Um, I guess maybe I'm thinking Dead Men of Dunharrow. Uh, so I move Strider to um, I like move Strider maybe to Edoras or something like that, and then play Dead Men of Dunharrow with that other character die, and then muster more in Pilar gear. I'm not sure. Um, so in the end, I was not anticipating playing Kyrdan ships, but, um, I do, I do play it here because I want, I, I need to be able to hold Dol Amroth well enough to be able to, um, basically, uh, survive the round. Um, otherwise I'm in, otherwise I'm in big trouble. So, um, I play it here. I don't really like spending so much that, uh, the, the elven pool is going to be depleted. Uh, you can see I'm down to only a single elven regular, but I need to hold the Lamroth. So I end up spending both elites, both elven elites and then I get a Gondor uh, regular back. Um, obviously that weakens Lorien, but I have to I have to survive the round first. So my opponent attacks Dolemroth. They play Foul Thing here, and uh, they get two hits. I get two hits. They uh, stop and draw here. Okay. And then they attacked Old Amroth again. I'm waiting to see what's going to happen if I need to play Deadman of Dunharrow. As soon as they play a strategy card, I play my advantageous position. So they end up not losing anything for um, for Relentless Assault. So I feel very happy that advantageous position stopped Relentless Assault there. And um, they get they still get three hits. So obviously that's not good for me. Uh, at least I get three hits back. And then they're thinking about, okay, they stop and draw again. And um, the other thing that I know here is because they've played Ulog High and because they've played Half-Orc and Goblin Men, um, I know that they don't actually have reinforcements that they can bring to Dol Amroth. So if I can hold Dol Amroth against this army, then my ability to... Um, like their ability to reinforce reinforce it is low. It's going to take them a lot of actions to reinforce it. So that's why I invested as much as I did with the elves. Um, okay, they play Great Host, which I think makes a lot of sense. Um, it's obviously a little bit of a risk, but if they could get even one hit, that'll be good. Uh, it turns out they get no hits, um, which, you know, over the course of this whole battle, I think is probably close to average, but, um, and I get two hits. So now... They have four units. I have three. I think I've managed to hold Dol Amroth relatively well. Obviously, it'd be great if I still had Imrahil of Dol Amroth. I could, I could play it. Um, okay. So with my character, I move to Westamnet. I need to be prepared to retake Helm's Deep next round and just continue to stall and cause trouble. So um, my opponent... Uh, Let's see, moves armies here. I'm not sure exactly why, but I guess that makes sense. Uh, to I guess they're just starting to get starting to get um, ready to take Lorien. Um, that makes sense to me. All right, and then character movement. I move Strider uh, or Aragorn now and Boromir to uh, Westamnet to get ready to play Dead Men of Dunharrow to get ready to attack into Helm's Deep. Who, who knows who knows what, but that's a very centralized army that can do a bunch of things. Um, it's going to be tempting to retake Helm's Deep, but my opponent is... Oh, I see. Sorry. They moved into Fords of Eisen to, to, defend, um, to defend Helm's Deep from this incoming attack, which makes sense because they want to hold Helm's Deep. They leave three hit points in Orthanc. If I had two Ents... I could definitely take out, or not definitely, but I would definitely try to take out Saruman. With only a single end, it doesn't feel worth it to me to try and take out Saruman that way. I would be more inclined to, um, you know, maybe just attack Orthanc if I had the chance. Okay, so um, 
my opponent uh, uses a muster to get rid of power too great. So that makes sense. They get rid of Morgul Wound and Denethor's Folly. Great choices there. Um, I realize that my mouse battery has died, so I'm going to uh, draw cards and um, I heal again, declare again into Lorien, and um, my opponent again properly declare uh, allocates no eyes. The fellowship is just going super slow, and I get uh, my they get only one um, die, and then I roll this sort of okay uh, roll. Um, and I will let you think here, what would you do as three people this round? What would you plan for? Um, or a shadow, what would you plan for? I'm gonna go change my mouse battery. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. So let's see if I can get my mouse working again. Um, yes, back on. This is such an epic game, it drained the battery of my mouse. Okay, so um, my concerns are, I want to try and mess with Shadow enough that I can survive and maybe I can retake Helm's Deep. I don't know. Um, it looks like Dol Amroth is holding, but um, these armies can probably come and take Pilar gear. I do have dead men of Dunharrow. Um, I'm also quite worried now about Lorien and I only have a single elven regular. So my plan is I'm going to muster um, that elven regular into Lorien because it seems like Lorien's getting attacked. And then if it gets besieged, I will um, use all these companions to defend Lorien. And then maybe at some point I can start going again with the fellowship. Um, Gollum is a good guide and I can, I have six dice now, so I can hopefully hold what I have. Um, we'll see what happens. So um, I start of course by mustering into Lorien. I get another regular in um, Westamnet. Then my opponent starts moving towards Lorien and they now have successfully defended Helm's Deep. So I know that I can't, um, realistically, I, it'll be hard to retake it. Uh, my opponent asks for a quick take back because they should leave one regular and dole Golder. That's fine. Um, we're playing friendly. Uh, and obviously that makes total sense. There's no reason to bring everybody. And in case there's some crazy thing that happens, you don't wanna have a completely empty stronghold. All right, so my opponent tries again in Dol Amroth, and this makes me really nervous. Like I, I am, I have no cards. That, there's no easy way for me to reinforce Dol Amroth. Maybe what I should be doing is, you know, getting like mustering a little in Lamadon. Like even a little bit of mustering down here could could easily disrupt this army. Um, if my opponent takes Dol Amroth, um, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. So they play. Uh, character card, I play a strategy card to make sure that I, um, you know, don't take too much damage. Um, they forfeit two and um, get one hit and I get no hits. So now this is much worse. Four against two, I'm feeling not good. Um, and that was a great play of um, Dread and Despair to keep, to keep this army uh, as safe as possible while still inflicting some damage. So that was, I think, a really good card play. Um, I have to pass to see what happens. My opponent move. No, they think about moving to Cardolan. They change their mind. Um, <clears throat> and then they get, um, instead, units into, um, uh, into South Thillian. So if I had Faramir's Rangers, I would love to play it, but I use that just now as a combat card because I was worried about um, losing Dol Amroth and I didn't have anything else that could really help them. So that's why I did it. All right, now my opponent, I'm not sure why, but they switched to Lorien here. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess they could keep trying 
um, in Dol Amroth for a little bit more, but okay. Um, and now I separate all my companions because I need Lorien to hold. If Lorien doesn't hold, then um, I lose, right? It's just, there's no, I don't think there's any way that I can easily retake Lorien um, with the dice that I have. So, um, I, and, and the fellowship is still healing. Um, okay. So, uh, my opponent draws a card. They did, they didn't get the best roll. I get, uh, Riders of Theoden, uh, could be useful. That's going to let me play it. I can play it in Edoras or in, um, in a Rohan region containing companion. So I could play it here in Westham net if I want to, but daylight is a very powerful, um, combat effect. I also have heroic death. Um, that I can play in um, Lorien, which is useful. So we'll see what happens. Um, my opponent musters into Moria a little bit more. I muster more into uh, Westham Net. Maybe, again, maybe that should be down here, Lamadon, Pilargi, or something, to get ready to try and break the siege in Dol Amroth. That could be a mistake. And then my opponent uses um, the... Mouth's ability, very effective use of the mouth's ability, and uh, says, no, I'm not going to attack yet. I'm going to draw another card. I think, again, great choice to draw cards before attacking. And then um, I play Riders of Theoden because I don't have anything else useful to do with that Palantir die at this moment. And I want this Rohan army to be as powerful as possible, and I'm just hoping that Lorien's going to hold. Um and then they attack into Lorien using the Mouth's ability. So um, they play She Loves Lair, which is great. It's a really cool up time that you see uh, the combat ability on a red tile. Um, I think that's just really cool. So sometimes you see it in Lorien, sometimes you see it in, in Rivendell. But this is this is just a great use, right? The, the Fellowship isn't making progress. It's, it's actually a really powerful combat effect. And um, great. I play Blade of Westerness because um, I don't think I'm making a huge amount of progress with the Fellowship. And um, if I could kill off the mouth, it would be really good. So um, my opponent gets four hits. Obviously, I do not like seeing four hits here. Um, I get two hits, but one of them is the leader hit. So I do manage to take out the uh, the mouth with Blade of Westerness. One of the hobbits managed to do it. Let's say it was Mary. Way to go, Mary. Um, you killed the mouth of Sauron, but there was just a bunch of casualties that were done. So, you know, obviously Shadow doesn't want to lose the mouth of Sauron, but um, there are only two hit points left. And look at this gigantic army here. So I am pleased that I still have... Um, four combat dice because I have two captains of the West, Legolas and Gimli. So I have some chances, but my opponent presses and, um, and then of course I play heroic death here. So, um, my opponent gets two hits and then I get three hits and they debate how much to take for onslaught. So they have seven hit points there. Um, I have two hit points left. I'm not exactly sure what's best. Uh, I think they end up taking three and then, um, doing one, they get one hit. So obviously I'm happy to survive. Um, they can press and now, um, all they need is a single six. And I had been saving Dead Men of Dunharrow. I really wanted um, to be able to play this. It's very efficient mustering. It lets me um, sometimes do a surprise attack against Umbar. Or like now Mordor is quite empty. So, um, you know, I hate to play it. But now is the time for a sudden strike. I have four leadership. There are only three regular units there. If I can manage to do enough hits here... Um, Lorien will survive. So um, my opponent plays Deadly Strife and I play Sudden Strike because you got to do it. So Sudden Strike, drum roll, four leadership, um, one hit. So obviously better than than no hits, um, but more would have been good. Okay, so I get one hit and that means because I have Legolas, 
I'm going to roll two dice. I have a chance to um, destroy this attacking army. So my opponent gets two hits. My army is eliminated. Can I get two hits? I do. So in this battle, we managed to annihilate everyone. <laughs> Absolutely. Everyone gets annihilated. Shelob showed up. Like the mouth of Sauron died, Legolas Gimli, both hobbits died, like a bunch of elves and orcs died, a Nazgul died. Like this was <laughs> this was an epic battle. And but free people still have Lorien. So like next round, Gollum is gonna be able to declare into Lorien again. We're gonna be able to heal again. So um obviously that was pretty lucky for me. I did play some really powerful combat cards. Dead Men of Dunharrow, Heroic Death, and Mithril Coat and Sting. So, like, definitely, we all we played a bunch of good combat cards, and um, it was just an awesome, awesome battle. And now, look at this crazy situation. I had been hoping to draw like Path of the Woeses and send this army down, maybe do something crazy in, in Mordor. But now, Lorien is completely open. I have literally zero elves. Like, there are no elves that I can muster anywhere. Um, they're all, they're all dead or in Rivendell or Grey Havens. So I have to bring this army from Rohan up to Lorien to defend it. Otherwise this, this, um, unit is just going to march right in. And this is a moment where I'm happy to have saved this attack for the end. Um, I'm happy that my opponent doesn't have attacks that can, you know, anywhere to move units with a Palantir and, um, I'm happy they don't have a ring. So for all those reasons, um, my move is basically forced. I have to I have to come defend Lorien. Does it make sense to leave anybody anybody behind? I don't know. Um, I'm also going to come and try and take out Dol Guldur, go for a military victory, and or faint and get up to Woodland Realm and um, try and re retake that. Now the Fellowship is going to be fully healed. I mean, Gollum, just Gollum, but I can move, you know, start to make a little progress with the Fellowship now, potentially. I have played some... Um, uh, powerful fellowship cards like Mithrakot and Sting, and I discarded the two blue tiles. But I just saw my opponent play Shelob, and I know Shelob's gone. Um, and I also um, still haven't drawn Bilbo's Song. I haven't drawn There's Another Way, and I haven't drawn Athelos. So I I feel like like there are still some chances for the fellowship even now if I can manage to like retake something like Woodland Realm and stall even more. So my opponent draws a strategy card. I think that makes sense. And now we move on. So I got a second mighty attack. I feel really good about that to be able to take out Dol Golder and threaten military victory. Power of Dom Tom Bombadil is potentially quite good because my opponent is running low. They only have four strategy cards left. They could easily get to a situation where they don't have any strategy cards. And then I permanently defend the Shire with Tom Bombadil because if they didn't save a, a, an army card. All right, so hopefully now I get some character movement or Will of the West or military to be able to um, control things. My opponent allocates no eyes, obviously totally correct, and um, I get a nice flexible roll. I am a little worried about Day Without Dawn, but I get the I get the movement that I need to be able to defend Lorien, so that's good. I start by moving some into Western Brownlands, and I debate how many should I bring. Is three the right number into Lorien? Maybe I should have had an extra elite in there. Maybe, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know exactly how to split this army. I want to take Dol Guldur um, and then move along, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly what's right here. I would be very happy to draw um, through day and a night. Up until recently, I would have been very happy to draw Path of the Woses. But okay, so my opponent musters into Dol Guldur, and um, I besiege it right away because Lorien. I'm going to have time to get this army into Lorien before um, an army from Moria could reach Lorien. I feel like three and a leader is enough, but yeah, I really don't know. Okay, my opponent then has hill trolls, so. That's obviously not good for me. That's their last reinforcement. Now I have um, four hit points in there instead of two. I do have double mighty attack. So I feel like I still have good chances of being able to take out Dol Guldur. And I am now in no rush because there's literally no other card in the deck that they can play to reinforce Dol Guldur. 
that all of them are gone. Okay, so um, I pass just to see what my opponent does. They draw a strategy card. I go ahead and muster in Minas Tirith so I can start to threaten some military victory. And then my opponent starts mustering in uh, Mordor and I get a Nazgul back, so that makes sense. And then um, I muster more in Minas Tirith and uh, then my opponent musters in Gondor. You know, they can still take Dol Amroth and they can still take Pelargir. So I have to be I have to be a little careful um, now. They have two more attacks. So I guess not this round. It's impossible this round for them to get uh, get to 10. But if they get Dol Amroth and they get Pelargir, yeah. And maybe, again, maybe that mustering shouldn't have been in Minas Tirith. Maybe it should have been in Lamadon. I don't know. Um, I draw a strategy card because what else can I do? I'm happy to see Confusion. And um, my opponent moves out of Helm's Deep into Westamnet to start recapturing. Right, they can just recapture Edoras. So that's not great for me. Maybe I should have been mustering in Edoras. What was my force pull? I had three Rohan regulars. Maybe I should have been mustering there. I don't know. I move into Lorien and I move out to Osgiliath. And I'm doing that because... I need to be able to go retake Edoras again, second time this game. I need to be able to defend Pelargir. I need to be able to threaten military victory in case my opponent can't get to 10. Um, I don't know. I end up thinking, hmm, what should I do? Yes, okay. Now, the other thing is I drew strategy cards because I, I know I have Day Without Dawn somewhere in here. And if I can play Day Without Dawn to get to Old Forest Road, that could be really great to be able to retake Woodland Realm. So, all right, my opponent ends up taking Edoras. I didn't manage to muster those um, Rohan regulars. It's a little bit of a shame. I don't know. I don't know exactly what was what was best there. My opponent now goes up to eight. If they get Dol Amroth, then they've won the game. Um, so I need to have some plan for retaking something. Um, okay, I draw Dane Ironfoot's guard now, File of Galadriel, and I end up discarding File of Galadriel because I'm thinking uh, at this point, Shadow Military is still quite strong, and um, I'm just going to hope that they roll really badly. I'm going to go for a military victory. This army in Osgiliath can do something in uh, Mordor. They're not going to be able to defend all three of these Mordor strongholds. I can take out... Um, Dol Goldor, and then maybe someday th these armies over here um, in the west can can maybe do something. Okay, we'll see what happens. But I'm definitely thinking at this point military victory because if I if I was not thinking military victory, I certainly would have saved File of Galadriel because that is one of the most powerful healing cards. Okay, um, I get three attacks. We expect about four, but. Okay, my opponent gets one, two, three, four, five attacks, which is about average on nine dice. I'm very happy that Malthasaurin is gone because now this muster is just a muster and not um, an extra attack. So I start by passing just to see what's going to happen because I know there's no rush in um, Dual Golder. And um, it may be the case that I have to go retake Dale. Because if Dol Golder, I mean, if um, Dol Amroth falls, or if Lorien falls, um, then I have to get one victory point back somehow. Maybe it's this army in Osgiliath. Um, but I think my real hope is take out Dol Golder and then retake Woodland Realm or Dale. All right. King is revealed, obviously, is good. That makes me think less of my chances in Mordor. And we remember, I remember to put the Nazgul in there. And then Pelargir and Minas Tirith start mustering up. My opponent moves um, army units into to take Pelargir, which I think I think makes sense because if they get Pelargir, and then it doesn't really matter if I retake um, if I retake Edoras. And this is the sort of moment where I'm like, oh, I wish Aragorn was still in Rohan and then I could still have Day Without, or still had Dead Men of Dunharrow, but um, Dead Men of Dunharrow did what it needed to do in combat. Okay. Um, I obviously need to make sure this army in West Arondor does not reconnect with the army in Dol Amroth. So that is something I have to be careful of. Um, I muster a little more into Pilar gear and then. Um, 
into Minas Tirith. And what's my Gondor force pool looking like? I still have three Gondor regulars, so that's okay. Um, my opponent gets Shadow Lengthens, and I'm still continuing to save my attacks to see what happens. And then my opponent just attacks into Dual Amroth because, hey, maybe it's going to work out, and maybe they can um, get an extra uh, two victory points right here. They play a strategy card, Deadly Strife, obviously good. I play Confusion because this is a chance to potentially uh, eliminate that army. But um, they get one hit on themselves, but um, three hits against me, which is enough to defeat me, and I get two hits on them. So in the end, um, they did manage to defeat Dol Amroth. They are now at 10 victory points. So I know with my four dice... Um, I have to retake a victory point somehow, and I have to um, further hold, I have to hold Pilar gear. Um, like retaking Dale is not enough. So um, at this point, uh, I think you can think to yourself, what would you do uh, to retake some victory points? Um, I guess my analysis here is if I go take Edoras, or if I go take Dale, that's only one victory point. And um, it's not going to be, it's not going to be enough. Um, because then Pilar gear, they can take Pilar gear. Um, I could maybe get Woodland Realm, but they have enough dice to defend it and get this army from Erebor into Woodland Realm. So the only location that I can actually retake successfully is Dol Amroth itself. And so um, I have to move to Pelargir, move to Lamadon, besiege Dol Amroth, and then use a ring to attack Dol Amroth with my fourth die. So, um, and if I do that successfully, and the odds of that happening are very high, then I'll kill the Witch King. So that's at least good because I managed to kill the Mouth. Um, it's still a pretty dire situation for me, but okay. So um, I start moving my armies. I leave a regular, two regulars in Osgiliath. I guess my thinking is I don't have scouts, but at least I, I need to also simultaneously retake Dol Amroth, but also not lose Minas Tirith right away. It's okay if I lose Pilar gear. So I leave two units in Osgiliath, thinking that an attack into Osgiliath will maybe get one hit, but probably not two, and then I'll be able to... Um, get one regular into Minas Tirith and it might be able to hold at least for a bit with five units in there. So that's my thinking with that. And I want to leave enough that um, these army dice um, sort of hinder the shadow army movements to slow them down a bit. Okay, so um, I then uh, move, what did I just do? I combine this army from Buckland into Bree. Okay, you know, it would be better again if I only had two armies here instead of three armies, but I guess I'm starting to starting to merge that army up. If I can get all these units together, it will be very powerful. But it takes a lot of actions to do that. Okay, my opponent attacks into us Gilead. I think that makes sense. If you attack into Pilar Gear, um, that's okay. But then you give me a free movement into Lamadon. If if I like, if you press, then. Um, I get to retreat to Lamadon and then attack into Dol Amroth. So I think going after Osgiliath makes a lot of sense. Fine, maybe I'm going to get Dol Amroth, but maybe I'm, maybe free people will retake Dol Amroth, but at least you're then making progress against Minas Tirith. So um, um, the probabilities that I foresaw was taking one hit, which is exactly what happened, and then I get to retreat into Minas Tirith. My opponent leaves two behind in West Herondor. Okay. I, I, um, three behind in West Herondor. Okay. Uh, I have to go take Dol Amroth. There's no question about that. Um, but at least you're defending against a future sort of military attack. All right. I leave one behind in Pilar gear because at least that will require a full action die instead of more efficient army movement. And I believe that this army is going to be enough to take out Dol Amroth. And then my opponent um, plays Shadow Lengthens. And then they think, wait, no, I don't think I'll do that. And instead, I will move armies and run away this regular unit from Dol Amroth. So my opponent this round took Dol Amroth and then ran away with this regular unit, which took Dol Amroth, so that the Witch King will survive. And um, 
this is hilarious. I mean, this is just, it's just when, when does stuff like this happen in a game? I love that this is happening. And when you think about it, I, I think it actually makes sense because otherwise the Witch King is definitely dying. Uh, not definitely, but like I have like a bunch of rounds to be able to roll a six against the, the siege. And, um, like my opponent doesn't, if they had maybe a, a, a few, uh, dread and despair, maybe, maybe you try and ride it out. But, um, you know, I'm basically getting, I'm basically getting Dol Amroth. So the question is, do you want a ring? Because I would have to spend a ring. Do you want a ring in exchange for the Witch King? And I think the answer is no, I'd rather keep the Witch King. You can keep your ring, but I keep the Witch King. So I don't know. That's just, I, it's just crazy that that happened. And this, this is only, this only works because, um, there's exactly one unit here. Um, if there were even a, any second unit, the witch King and that second unit could move out, making them safe, leaving a regular unit there. Um, so also the fact that my opponent doesn't have any rings, ha doesn't have ring, ring, ring wraiths or abroad, um, also is why this is relevant. So, okay. So, um, that happened and it's hilarious. And then my dudes just walk into, um, Dol Amroth. I put two regulars in there and, um, I think that's going to be enough to hold against this, uh, unit in the single unit in Anfalos. And, um, then that's going to leave me some freedom with these armies in Lamadon to come back to Pilar gear, maybe defend Pilar gear and, um, maybe just cause other trouble. So that's my thinking. And then my opponent plays shadow lengthens. They merge up into us Gilead. That's obviously great. And, um, now have this, this Uber army and as Gilead, that was a great play of their Palantir. Okay. Um, what's next? I draw a character a strategy card. Path of Woes is not so useful now. Um, and then we note that I am minus five on character dice and minus five on will this game. I think my opponent is pretty far minus on sixes right now. Let's look at their, yeah, they're minus seven on sixes. So, you know. Um, okay. More cards. I now draw through a day and a night, so that's useful. If Minas Tirith falls, maybe I can go reclaim Woodland Realm. Um, and I discard Challenge of the King. I hate to discard Challenge of the King but because of Sudden Strike, but I'm happier with Mighty Attacks. And I think and now I get rid of Power of Tom Bombadil. Um, I hate to get rid of that also, but um, because it could defend the Shire, but... I think it's the least useful card that I'm going to get to play. All right. My opponent allocates no eyes, rolls none. And then I get this nice uh, five attack um, roll. That's good. And then uh, I know that I'm going to need to, I want to take out Dol Golder. And then I want to head north and reclaim Woodland Realm. So that's my thinking. Um, I play Mighty Attack, get no sixes. My opponent gets no hits. I press. Um, I play Mighty Attack again um and get no sixes so that was 18 dice no sixes um and then my opponent gets two sixes so this army that that was like a nine power army against only two regulars or two you know two combat strength has just taken a lot of damage and um at this point i stop because i just um i'm hoping i guess minas tirith is going to hold maybe it'll hold and I don't want to decimate this army. I don't want to get this army too, too low. Um, obviously, it'd be nice to get through a day and a night up to Woodland Realm in my next action, but I can use a ring if I have to. So that's my plan. I have two rings left. All right, my opponent moves Nazgul around, um, takes it back, and instead just gets uh, moves everybody into Dale to get ready for um, uh, through a day and a night which I think is a good strategy. All right, I really want to take out Dol Golder before I leave. So um, I play uh, Sudden Strike here. I don't think Path of Woes is going to be useful. And I really want to take out these units. I finally roll a six, and then I roll another six. So, But my opponent gets yet another hit. So they got quite a few hits against me. 
Um, I'm really not happy about that, but that's how it goes sometimes. So now they move Nazgul and um, I decide that I have to come up here and uh, be prepared to do something up here because what else, what else can I do? Um, it's not great. I mean, this is four, four hit points against eight hit points is not good, but that's how it goes. All right. So they put two hit points into Woodland Realm and um, cover Umbar also. I do have two victory points now. So if they don't take out Minas Tirith, then, you know, maybe I could take out Umbar and that, that'd be pretty great. So um, I move armies and I get ready to maybe try and take out Umbar. They get an elite into Umbar. Obviously, that's not enough. The other thing that I'm thinking about is maybe Far Harad and Ankmar. Like that could be a possibility too. So I just don't have quite enough dice for all of that. Um, if Aragorn had showed up a little sooner, I would have had more dice, but that's how it goes. All right. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm thinking, should I go for Far Harad? Should I move, merge up these armies? These armies over in the West are just so slow. Um, and I decide to attack Umbar. I think it's unlikely that these this eight hit point army can take out this five hit point army, especially with only one leadership. Um, but, you know, Maybe it's worth trying. Okay. Um, my opponent takes out uh, or attacks Minas Tirith, gets two hits, I get one. They press. Um, they get three hits, I get three hits. And they uh, play Relentless Assault here. Um, and I see this Day Without Dawn. So that is very useful whenever your opponent plays Day Without Dawn. You want to make note of that. Um, obviously, it's their, it's their last strategy card. And now that I know that I'm, I'm safe from Day Without Dawn, it was obviously their last strategy card too. Okay, they get um, they get one hit, and um, they're now at ten victory points. So I have a single die. My only chance is for this army uh, in Old Forest Road to take out Dale. So last round. I had to recapture two victory points in Dol Amroth. Uh, this round, I have to recapture one victory point um, in Dale. This is obviously a pretty low odds battle, um, especially because I'm attacking into a um, city, but I do have more leadership, so maybe I could get lucky. Um, my only playable combat card is Confusion. I wish that I had saved... Um, Tom Bombadil, maybe that could have been good, but all right. So I have to use a ring. My opponent says good game, but you know, pro probably good game, but maybe. All right. So I go ahead and attack into Dale and my opponent plays uh, L Lidless Eye. I think that's great. I think it's amazing that they've saved Warren with Sor Sor Sorrow and Toil this long, but um, that's great. So they're canceling out um, Aragorn. Um Okay, wait, they, they undid that because I get to choose card first. It's fine. Um, I play my card, and then they still play um, Words of Power. So that's uh, that's good. And um, that's interesting. So they saved Littlest Eye. If I was paying a lot of attention, I would know that they still have um, Littlest Eye in their hand. Um, but, okay. Um, I play Three Day and a Night here. I hate to have to use this in this way. But if I don't win this battle, I lose the whole game. So I play it here for the combat effect, hoping that they're going to roll a bunch of ones um, and not a lot of fives and sixes. So um, they cancel Aragorn, which means um, I only have three leadership. Um, but I roll two sixes, which is great for me. And then they roll no fives and sixes and two ones. And they also miss on their leader reroll. So that, I don't know what the odds of this outcome is that they end up taking four damage and I take zero. Um, but that is cre quite unlikely. I don't know how unlikely, but like 5%, 1%, I don't know, unlikely. Um, and also I love Boromir and Aragorn like marched from Minas Tirith through Rohan, through Dol Guldur, all the way up to Dale. 
And so now they're in Dale. My my one regret in this game is that I left this um, Gondor unit in Dol Guldur instead of bringing the Gondor unit up north because like that's really far for a Gondor unit to travel. Um, anyway, okay, so I take Dale and then um, they retreat, which I think is absolutely correct. I mean, this army would lose for sure against this, not for sure, but very likely this, these two regulars would lose against um, this uh, army with five um, effectively five combat strength and five leadership. So they retreat and at least now they defend Erebor. But I save the game at least for another round um, down to nine. So you can see why this has been an epic game. Okay, I draw Anduril, which is very useful when you're going for a military victory um, or if you need to retake more um, strongholds. So um, I, um, my opponent allocates no eyes. I think they forget to roll. Um, did we roll already? What's going on? I think, okay, great. <laughs> so they roll their dice. They get no eyes, um, which is obviously good when your opponent's going for military victory. And I get um, four attacks, which is pretty balanced. At this point, I'm very happy to roll Wills of the West because I know um, Day Without Dawn is gone. Um, so I think, I hate to say it, but I think that I'm going to pause this video. We're going to do a cliffhanger for part two because this video is getting ridiculously long um, and I need to take a break. But um, to be continued in the next video, cliffhanger. Thanks for watching.